Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video, I'll tell you about the Dirichlet's conditions, right? So we have often seen that whenever we are expanding a four-year series expansion, then there are certain questions where something get, is deduced, right, from that expression. So we put some values to x to get the deduction. But then there are certain values in the interval where our function is not defined. So how to evaluate the value of the function at those points? So let us do the Dirichlet's condition for this. So it says that if fx is a periodic function with period 2y, uh, piecewise continuous and bounded over the interval alpha to alpha plus 2pi, then at the point of continuity, the Fourier series converges to fx. So whenever we give some values to x, we check the interval. If the value of x is defined in that interval and continues, then we can directly put in the function, right? But if it is a point of discontinuity, suppose the point of discontinuity is x0 and the function is not given defined at x0, so then we cannot put in the value. So in that case, suppose this is the interval and at this point x0, the function is not defined. So how do we calculate the value of the function at this point? So what do we do? We try to calculate the left limit and we try to calculate the right limit about this point and we take its average. So the left limit is f of x0 from the minus sign plus f of x0 plus that is the right hand limit and then we take its average, right? So I'll tell you about this formula in the following question where we will be using this, right? So it will become more clear in that. So the question says, you have to find out the Fourier series expansion for the following function and then you need to deduce this expression, right? So let us first try to calculate the values of A0, An and Bn and then we will try to deduce it, right? So you can see that the interval is minus pi to pi but still the function cannot be uh, said as if it is an even function or an odd function. So in that case, we have to calculate all the values of A0, An and Bn. So let us do it one by one. So let's calculate A0. So if you convert this whole interval and compare it with the general interval that is C to C plus 2L, so you will find that C is minus pi and L will come out to be pi, right? So A0 is 1 by L. So I'm not writing the formula anymore. Interval is from minus pi to pi and then we have the function f of x dx. So you can see that the function is not defined in this entire interval. There is a break at 0. So accordingly, we will break our integral. So minus pi to 0 and in the interval minus pi to 0, you can see that the function is minus pi dx. I'll just put a bracket over here. And then the next interval is from 0 to pi and the function given to us is x dx, right? So when we solve it, we get 1 by pi. Integration of minus pi is minus pi x from minus pi to 0. And then integration of x is x squared by 2 from the interval 0 to pi. So now 1 by pi is already out. So here when we put in the upper and the lower limit, it will be 0 minus minus pi. So it will become plus pi. So that is minus pi square, right? And from here, we will get pi square by 2. So minus pi square plus pi square by 2 is minus pi square by 2. And 1 pi will get cancelled and we will get our A0 as minus pi by 2. So I'm writing the values here. A0 is minus pi by 2. Right. Now let us calculate An. So An will be 1 by pi. Then we have integration minus pi. I'm just breaking the limits. Minus pi to 0. We will have minus pi into cos. It is n pi x by pi, so pi and pi will get cancelled and we will have cos nx dx. And the second integral will be 0 to pi x into cos nx dx, right? So when we solve this by Islet rule, what do we get? We get minus pi integration of cos nx is sin nx by n limits from minus pi to 0. And the second one will become x into sin nx by n minus integration, sorry, derivative of x is 1. Integration of sin nx will become minus, so this will become plus, And we will have cos nx by n square. And we put in the limits from 0 to pi, right? 
So now let's see which terms will become zero. So you will see that sine zero is zero and sine n pi is also zero. So this term is zero. Similarly, this term is zero. So we will only get our answer from here. So what do we get? One by pi was already outside, right? And from here, you can see I can take out n square also outside. So we are left with cos n pi, which is minus 1 raised to power n minus cos of 0, that is 1, right? So let's see what does this become. This is when n is odd. In odd case, it is minus 1. So it is minus 2 by n square pi. And when n is even, this will be 1 and this will become 0. So n is even, right? So let me write down a n over here. So a n is minus 2 by n square pi when n is odd and it is 0 when n is even, right? And now let us finally calculate b n. So b n is 1 by pi. We have minus pi to 0. We get minus pi sine n x dx plus 0 to pi x into sine n x dx right now let's integrate it we get 1 by pi then we have minus pi integration of sine n x is minus so this will become plus and we will get cos n x by n limits from minus pi to 0 plus we have x into Integration of sine is minus cos nx by n and we have minus derivative of x is 1. Integration of minus cos will become minus sine nx by n square. And we have the limits from 0 to 1. Right. So which terms will cancel out? This term will become 0 and we are left with these two terms. So let us put in the value in this. So we have 1 by pi. From here, pi by n can be taken out common. And we are left with cos of 0, which is 1 minus cos of minus n pi minus cos n pi, which is minus 1 raised to power n. And from this term, we will get minus 1 by n common. Cos of pi, cos n pi is minus 1 raised to power n. And 0 will make this term right so now what are we getting we are getting pi will get cancelled you can see right we can take out one by n common we have one minus minus one raised to power n minus minus one so it is minus two right so again you can divide it into an even and an odd case so when n is odd this is minus one so this is one plus two which is 3 by n and when n is even then what do we get this is plus 1 so 1 minus 2 is minus 1 by n right so let me write down the value of bn over here so bn is 3 by n when n is odd and it is minus 1 by n when n is even right so now let us develop the Fourier series expansion and then we will find out the deduction, right? Okay. So now let us write down the Fourier series expansion. And when we write down the Fourier series expansion, we get f of x is equal to a naught by 2. So that is minus pi by 4 plus. Now you can see that the expansion is only opening for n odd. So we can replace n with 2n minus 1. And we get the term minus 2 upon 2n minus 1 square into pi cos 2n minus 1 x, right? Plus for bn, this is our term. So actually we were getting the term n equal to 1 to infinity. 1 minus minus 2 times minus 1 raised to power n divided by n into sine nx, right? So let us expand the terms for the first few terms. Only then we'll get an idea. So you can see that minus 2 by pi can be taken out common. 
Now for the n odd term, we will get the first term as 1 by 1 square cos of x. Then we will get 1 by 3 square cos of 3x. Then we will get 1 by 5 square cos of 5x and so on. Right. And for the second case, the terms are when n is odd, it will be 3 by 1 sin x. Then for n even, it will be minus 1 by 2 sin 2x. Then we will have 3 by 3 sin 3x. Then we will have minus 1 by 4 sin 4x and the expansion goes like this. Right. So this is our Fourier series expansion and now we need to do the deduction part. In the deduction part, you can see that we are getting the values 1 by 1 square, 1 by 3 square, 1 by 5 square and so on. That means these coefficients are the coefficients of cos. So you have to give some values to x so that these terms are retained and the sign terms goes off. Right. So the most probable value that you can give is x equal to 0 because we know that all the values of cos will become 1 and the sign terms they will all become 0. Right. So, we have f at 0 is equal to minus pi by 4 minus 2 by pi. We'll get 1 by 1 square, 1 by 3 square, 1 by 5 square and so on. And you can see all these terms will become 0. Now, we need to calculate the value of f at 0. So, in the very beginning, we started the lecture with the Richard condition when you have to evaluate the function's value at a point which is not a point of continuity. So, you can see that x equal to 0 is a point of discontinuity. It's not defined. So, how do we calculate f at 0? So, f at 0 is basically half of f of the left-hand limit plus the right-hand limit, right? So, let's see what is the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. So let me draw the interval to make it clear. So this is the point 0, this is the point minus pi and this is the point pi. So in the interval minus pi to 0, the function is defined as minus pi, right? And for this interval 0 to pi, the function is defined as x, right? So when we are calculating 0 minus, 0 minus means the point, the function is not known at 0. 0 minus means we are deleting something. So, when we are deleting something from this, that means I am in this interval and in this interval the value of the function is minus pi. So, the value of f of 0 minus becomes minus pi. And what is 0 plus? 0 plus means you are adding something in the 0. So, you get inside this interval and in this interval the value of the function is x. So, at x we have to calculate the value at 0. So, the value becomes 0. So, this becomes minus pi by 2, right? So, when we substitute here minus pi by 2, so this will be minus pi by 4 minus 2 pi by something. So, this plus minus pi by 4 will get go to the other side and will become plus and we will get minus 2 pi pi. Then we have 1 by 1 square, 1 by 3 square, 1 by 5 square and so on. So, now this is minus pi by 4 and this minus pi by 2 will also get multiplied over here and we get our required answer that is 1 by 1 square plus 3 square plus 5 square is same as pi square by 8 right so this term will turn out to be pi square by 8 right so i hope the richlet's conditions are clear over here how did we calculate f of 0 at the point of discontinuity. So, x equal to 0 was a point of discontinuity and with the help of Richlet's condition, we could calculate the value at the point of discontinuity, right? So, that's all. Thank you so much, right, for listening to me and those of you who have subscribed my channel, good, share it with others. And those of you who have not subscribed, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. And if you like the video, do hit the like button. Believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed. Thank you.